Man of the Island, Chapter Seventeen, A Letter from Davy. It's beginning to snow, girls," said Phil, coming in one November evening, and there are the loveliest little stars and crosses all over the garden walk. I never noticed before what exquisite things snowflakes really are. One has time to notice things like that in the simple life. Bless you all for permitting me to live it. It's really delightful to feel worried because butter has gone up five cents a pound. Has it? Demanded Stella, who kept the household accounts. It has, and here's your butter. I'm getting quite expert at marketing. It's better fun than flirting. Concluded Phil gravely. Everything is going up scandalously. Sighed Stella. Never mind. Thank goodness, air and salvation are still free. Said Aunt Jamesina. And so is laughter. Added Anne. There's no tax on it yet, and that is well, because you're all going to laugh presently. I'm going to read you Davy's letter. His spelling has improved immensely this past year, though he's not strong at apostrophes, and he certainly possesses the gift of writing an interesting letter. Listen and laugh before we settle down to the evening's study grind. Dear Anne, ran Davy's letter. I take my pen to tell you that we are all pretty well, and hope this will find you the same. It's snowing some today, and Marilla says the old woman in the sky is shaking her feather beds. Is the old woman in the sky God's wife, Anne? I want to know. Mrs. Lynde has been real sick, but she is better now. She fell down the cellar stairs last week. When she fell, she grabbed hold of the shelf with all the milk pails and stew pans on it, and it gave way and went down with her and made a splendid crash. Marilla thought it was an earthquake at first. One of the stew pans was all dinged up, and Mrs. Lynde strained her ribs. The doctor came and gave her medicine to rub on her ribs, but she didn't understand him and took it all inside instead. The doctor said it was a wonder it didn't kill her, but it didn't, and it cured her ribs. And Mrs. Lynde says doctors don't know much anyhow. But we couldn't fix up the stew pan. Marilla had to throw it out. Thanksgiving was last week. There was no school, and we had a great dinner. I ate mince pie and roast turkey and fruit cake and doughnuts and cheese and jam and chocolate cake. Marilla said I'd die, but I didn't. Dora had earache after it. Only it wasn't in her ears; it was in her stomach. I didn't have earache anywhere. Our new teacher is a man. He does things for jokes. Last week he made all us third-class boys write a composition on what kind of a wife we'd like to have, and the girls on what kind of a husband. He laughed fit to kill when he read them. This was mine. I thought you'd like to see it. The kind of a wife I'd like to have. She must have good manners and get my meals on time and do what I tell her and always be very polite to me. She must be fifteen years old. She must be good to the poor and keep her house tidy and be good-tempered and go to church regularly. She must be very handsome and have curly hair. If I get a wife that is just what I like, it'll be an awful good husband to her. I think a woman ought to be awful good to her husband. Some poor women haven't any husbands. The end. I was at Mrs. Isaac Wright's funeral at White Sands last week. The husband of the corpse felt real sorry. Mrs. Lynn says Mrs. Wright's grandfather stole a sheep, but Marilla says we mustn't speak ill of the dead. Why mustn't we, Anne? I want to know. It's pretty safe, ain't it? Mrs. Lynn was awful mad the other day because I asked her if she was alive in Noah's time. I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. I just wanted to know. Was she, Anne? Mr. Harrison wanted to get rid of his dog, so he hunged him once, but he come to life and scooted for the barn while Mr. Harrison was digging the grave. So he hunged him again, and he stayed dead that time. Mr. Harrison has a new man working for him. He's awful awkward. Mr. Harrison says he is left-handed in both his feet. Mr. Barry's hired man is lazy. Mrs. Barry says that, but Mr. Barry says he ain't lazy exactly. Only he thinks it's easier to pray for things than to work for them. Mrs. Harmon Andrews' prized pig that she talked so much of died in a fit. Mrs. Lynn says it was a judgment on her for pride, but I think it was hard on the pig. Milty Bolter has been sick. The doctor gave him medicine and it tasted horrid. I offered to take it for him for a quarter, but the Bolters are so mean. Milty says he'd rather take it himself and save his money. I asked Mrs. Bolter how a person would go about catching a man, and she got awful mad and said she didn't know. She had never chased men. The Avis is going to paint the hall again. They're tired of having it blue. The new minister was here to tea last night. He took three pieces of pie. If I did that, Mrs. Lynde would call me piggy. And he ate fast and took big bites. And Marilla is always telling me not to do that. Why can ministers do what boys can't? I want to know. I haven't any more news. Here are six kisses. X X X X X X. Dora sends one. Here's hers. X. Your loving friend, David Keith. P.S. Anne, who was the devil's father? I want to know.
End of chapter 17. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain.